Hello friend, this is 12th video in this microservice tutorial. In last video, we seen how we can use Spring Cloud Sleuth for distributed logging. And before that, we seen that how we can implement circuit breaker using Resilience 4J. If these videos are helpful for you, then please like and share this video and subscribe the channel. In last video, we discussed the problems in distributed logging in microservice architecture. There we seen Spring Cloud Sleuth as a solution. We seen how Spring Cloud Sleuth add trace ID and span ID to the log entries which we can use in Zipkin for the visualization of those logs. So Zipkin is an open source project that provides mechanism for sending, receiving, storing and visualizing traces. This allows us to correlate activity between servers and get a much clearer picture of exactly what is happening in our services. So Zipkin is a distributed tracing system and it helps gather timing data needed to troubleshoot latency problem in service architecture. So this is very useful during debugging when lots of microservices are implemented and the application becomes slow in any particular situation. In such case, we first need to identify to see which underlying service is actually slow. Once the slow service is identified, we can work to fix that issue. Distributed tracing helps in identifying that slow component among the ecosystem. So there are two ways to use Zipkin in our project. One is we can create a separate Spring Boot project and there we can use these two dependency. First is Zipkin server and second one is Zipkin auto configure UI. And the another way to use Zipkin in our project is to use the jar and run that jar so that we don't have to create Zipkin application from scratch. We can use built-in Zipkin server using jar. So to download that jar, let's go to Google and type here Zipkin server Maven jar. Go to first one and click here 2.12.9. Here we can see files jar 45 KB. Click here view all and then click here to download this jar. After download finish, Let's go to that folder and here we have that Zipkin server 2.12.9 EXEC. You can download the latest one, whichever is available. Now to run this jar file, let's open the command prompt, go to the folder where we downloaded Zipkin server and to start the jar file, we have to write Java minus jar and then jar file name. Now Zipkin server has started and this is running on 9.4. 1 1 port. So this is the default port where it is running. We can change the port through command line while is starting the jar file. Now let's go to browser and see the Zipkin server console. We have to type localhost and this is running on 9411. Hit here and here it is. This is our Zipkin server console. So all the logs using Spring Cloud Sleuths will come here and then we can visualize it better. So this is our project structure. First one is Eureka registry. Then we have course microservices using SQL Server database. We have student microservice using MySQL database. And here we created our gateway. So to use Zipkin in our project, we have to add the Zipkin client dependency in our project, which I have done here, Spring Cloud Sleuth Zipkin. Once we add this, then all the logs will automatically register to the Zipkin server as well on the port of 9411. Similarly, I have added this dependency on pom.xml in course microservice as well. Here it is. And there is one property we can see here in application.yml spring Zipkin enable true. So if we have added this property Zipkin enable true, that means we are tracing all the logs through Zipkin server. If we change it to as false, then even though we have dependency of Zipkin in our pom.xml, it will not register those logs to the Zipkin server. Now for the demo purpose, I have imported course microservice in separate STS instance. Here it is. And similarly, the student microservice in a separate STS instance, here it is. So one by one, I will start and then we will see how the logging is happening and how we can visualize the data on Zipkin server. So first of all, I will start Eureka server from here. Okay, so I started Eureka server. Then I will start course microservice from course instance from here. And at the same time, I will start student microservice 
so as we seen in last video that we were calling this particular endpoint slash student slash id and get by id okay so here first log we were logging logger dot info and then we were calling the course microservice internally from the student microservice and here also i am putting log logger dot info and i am logging this particular information from the course microservice we are calling this particular endpoint slash course slash id question mark id and the course id which is coming from here here we have used course microservice application name for calling from a student microservice so let's go to course microservice and this endpoint we are calling this one get by id so if we go here in the implementation we are logging here first log logger.info and then we have created our own span where you can add tag to the newly created span and whenever we create a new span we have to make sure that we are closing that span as well so these things we discussed in details in previous video now let's see how the logs are generated so let's go to postman and here i am going to call this endpoint from a student microservice which is running on 8080 so let's click here and here we have the details of a student microservice and this details is coming from the course microservice okay so let's hit multiple times two three times one time two times three time now let's go to the student microservice here we can see that a spring cloud sleuth has generated these logs okay this is the application name and this is trace id and then this one is the span id let's go to the course microservice as well so here also we have application name and then trace id and this is the span id so the trace id is same from student microservice to the course microservice but the span id will be different for each particular service or each particular request now let's go to jipkin server ui here it is and now click on find traces so here is the log information which was created by the spring cloud sleuth so in total we made four requests that's why we are able to see here four different entries here we have multiple searches and filters as well like see service name so logs from all the services will be listed by default and we can filter as well so for now since we have used two microservices so it is listing logs from two microservices so we can choose any of them and then we can hit find traces similarly here is span name it will list all the span names where we can add filters log back so here we can see one hour three hours six hours logs so here it is saying the total request response time for this log entry is 1.68 second and it has four spans so in total for this particular request it generated four spans so let's click on this so here we have the detailed view of that particular request so first is student microservice so request initiated by calling this slash student slash id endpoints from the student microservice and then it goes to course service using http call in course service it called slash course slash id endpoint and here in course service it is showing that custom span logs which we created our own and here you see the time duration also it is showing that from that from this request to this particular course microservice it took 337 millisecond and then this course service in total taken this much time 674 plus 1 plus 1.34 second now when you click particular service then it shows you the date time this annotation is showing the server start and server finish events and this is the address where student microservice is running these are the values which we can say that uh, what method what path which class and which method is being called so here we can see everything when we click on show ids here it shows that for this request the trace id was this and the span id was this there was no parent span id because the request was initiated from student microservice itself now let's click on course service so here you see the annotation is saying client start server start client finish and server finish so here is the relative time taken in each event and here trace id this trace id is same which was generated from the first request entry in student microservice and then the same trace id passed to the course microservice this is the span id which was created when the request 
REST2 course microservice. And this is the parent span ID which was created for the student microservice. If you click on this, then here we can see our custom span which we created in code. So in overall, it is saying here duration 1.6 second, which is the total time for this particular request. Services to that here two services are used course microservice and student microservice depth is the level till where it penetrates and this is the total spans that in total there was three spans created and we can export these logs by clicking on this json so this is the log entry in the json format which we can download and use it to store to parse or to send any external application like Elasticsearch, etc. There is one more user interface available for the same Zipkin server. Let's click here, try Lens UI, and it will open in a different format. Click here, search, and then the all logs are coming here. So here the same thing we can see in a different user interface. And if there is any error in any microservices or any service is not working, then that particular microservice or logs will become in the red color so that we can easily identify that where is error occurring. And through this timestamp, we can see that which microservice or which particular method is taking more time to execute. And there we can focus to fix that issue. So that's all guys for this video. In next video, we will discuss about Spring Cloud Config. If this video is useful for you, then please like and share this video and subscribe the channel.